African leaders are finally working up, rejecting the European Union superpower, saying enough is enough. Africa are really up there before the white, and Africa don't have to believe in all superpowers. So what superpower without Africa? Honestly, African leaders, the set of African leaders now are ready to liberate Africa because it's time for Africa to take back their position, to take back their father's land from the European. So it is important for you to change your mentality that we need to understand that we are all equal. All of us must feel the suffering of the world. All of us must be allowed to speak conscience. What we must avoid is Europe thinking that we are going to be its sphere of influence. There are no superpowers, my last word. Otherwise, Afghanistan will not be left to those who are controlling it today if America was a superpower. There are no superpowers. That's why Syria is what it is now today, a country where the people cannot look at Iraq, look at all the world. There are no superpowers, China, Taiwan. We should abandon the superpower ideology. We should abandon spheres of influence. We should begin a cooperation of equality, knowing that in all parts of the group, there are people of conscience but they are not yet in power. How do we empower all those people so that we rid this world of tyrants, people who do not feel the suffering of people who do not need to change the world? It's not that your interpretation is correct, that African states do not want to condemn Russia. We do not want to be part of your foreign policy. We do not want you to use us. We want to be free to determine for ourselves whether we condemn or not condemn and when we will condemn. So it is important for you to change your mentality that we need to understand that we are all equal and sometimes we are even more advanced than you in thinking of what should be done about the world. Thank you. Everyone coming and making statements, PR statements about achievements wouldn't make any sense. Let's be focused. Okay, I will not talk about our achievements in agriculture, infrastructure, energy, water, and others. That will take time. Okay, now let's be focused. Occasions like this one, summits where people come, do their promotion about their achievements, and mostly PR exercise. Let's get out of this cycle, first and foremost. Okay, I would like to focus on my own issue. Now people are talking about the resources of the continent, 60% of this endowment, 20% of this endowment. I mean, why can't you mobilize your own resources rather than extend your hands for handouts and charity? Is there a way of mobilizing these resources in the continent? How do you mobilize these resources? Can you mobilize the resources of Niger that are going to Europe, uranium and what have you? What about the mineral resources of this continent? Are you mobilizing these resources for the development of the continent, for climate change? Where are these resources? Everybody's talking about their achievements in their own locality, in their own national borders, without even addressing the real issues challenging this continent. Talk about the continent's challenge and try to find solutions for, for, for this challenge, okay? We're talking about <laughs> climate change, you are talking about resources, you are talking about so many things. Don't divert focus on non-issues, okay? Now, do your homework, come up with a definition of your goals and objectives, strategize, go for detailed plans, and then come to mobilize resources so that you implement your programs. Otherwise, I don't want to waste your time and waste my time talking about our achievements in Eritrea. <laughs> Try to talk about some of the issues mentioned on, on this summit. These billions coming to this continent from anywhere, Europe, Americas, or any other place, you are inviting inter uh, intervention in your own affairs. And this money coming from there, billions and billions, will be siphoned back there. Make sure that you mobilize your own resources so that you can be enabled to benefit from resources coming from outside. The promises of billions is not good. Yeah.
Uh, again, it's the, fo the focus that we need to talk about. You're talking about corrupt governments and comparing them with the private sector and promoting the private sector, the private sector, the private sector. You put in place accountable governments, non-corrupt government that will use national resources for the development of, of, of the majority. This is not a matter of polarizing the private sector and the public sector. This classical arguments about the private sector, the, 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 the public sector, that makes sense at all. It's out of context. We need to be focused on this matter. We can't blame governments and bring non-governmental organizations to manage our affairs. <laughs> that is phenomenal. In Africa, go everywhere. Non-governmental government, non-governmental organizations are managing government and discrediting governments and re replacing them with what they call private sector. Can you imagine this makes sense to anyone? Now talk about serious things, okay? You want to implement programs, articulate your goals and objectives in the first place, okay? Strategize on how you can achieve these goals and objectives. Then go for detailed plans, detailed plans, sectoral plans or industrial plans, and then mobilize resource for that. Give these plans and the resources to reliable hands, accountable hands. Government or private sector doesn't matter. It's not a matter of being with or against that uh, party. How do you mobilize these resources to implement programs so that you address climate uh, change? Thank you. Yes. Focus, don't get us to some classical discussion.